there are four essentials that you need in skill acquisition. Because, see, talent will get you in the game. You have to have some talent. But in order to stay in the game and become one of the best ever, you've got to acquire additional skills. Welcome to The Sales Life. I'm your host, Marsh Bice. And three things we're going to deal with on this show, we're going to deal with adversity, uncertainty, and complacency. And five skills that you're going to learn from this show to handle the adversity, embrace uncertainty, and never settle again. These are skills that I've learned in 25 years of the sales profession, and I've been able to apply these skills to every area of my life to handle some of the roughest times. I've overcome obesity, bankruptcy, demotion, and suicidal thoughts. Those five skills all start with a letter C to make them easier to remember. Number one, you're going to learn how to communicate. And when you can start learning how to communicate better with yourself, you're going to be able to communicate better with others as well. You're going to chase curiosity. Instead of making statements, you're going to walk through your day with wonder and curiosity. You're also going to be creative. When you lack resources, you're going to become resourceful. You're also going to be a continuous learner and action. You got to have knowledge and know-how. And the fifth one, which is the Mac Daddy of them all, you're going to have to confront some things. And the first person that you're going to confront is yourself. You confront yourself and you get real with yourself and you deal with these issues. Drop the vices. Stop running. Stop acting like you have it going on. You deal with that. We're going to build you into a better man. You're going to bulletproof your mind and maximize your life. So if you want to be RFA, ready for anything, join the sales life today. Thank you so much for those of you who have been here before. It's because of your ears and your shares is the reason why we're one of the top in the world. Thank you so much for that. If this is your first time here, be sure and subscribe. And if you get some value out of today's content, continue to grow the show, both on the YouTube channel and wherever you listen to podcasts, share this with someone. So enough about that. Let's rock out with today's episode. Today on The Sales Life, I want to talk about talent. You know, talent's not enough. I think they even wrote a book about that. In the 24 years of my sales career, I've met a lot of talented people. Yet they ended up out of the business. And as I was thinking about this, I'm like, why? How did they end up out of the business? Super talented, way more talented than me. But it's because they didn't acquire any additional skills. It's like shooting on an eight-foot basketball goal your whole life. You never raise the bar, so you're not ready for the increase in competition. Talent is defined as ability. That's all it is. So the more skills I develop the more I increase my abilities. It goes without saying, but how many people have you grown up with that were from your hometown and they're just wasted potential? How many people do you work with that just have wasted potential? You like looking at this, you're like, oh my God, dude, why can't you even see this? It's because they have the talent, but they're not willing to acquire any additional skills and they just become this bust. Look, if I'm going to be a bust, it's the bust (laughs) in the hall of fame. That's the bust I want. I don't want to be the bust that, you know, here was a guy who had it all and didn't seize it. Didn't use it. I don't want that. So let me give you four ways that I follow to continue to evolve my game and acquire new skills. The first thing that you have to do to acquire new skills is you have to be willing to unlearn. How many times do you hold on to everything that you've developed and trained for all these years? Look, I have 24 years of sales experience, but I have to be willing to put my experience in the back seat and be willing to look foolish to acquire new skills. And as I acquire new skills, The experience that I've had initially takes a back seat, but it catches up and combined together makes me unstoppable. So if you're going to acquire new skills, number one, you got to be willing to look foolish. Skill acquisition requires friction. It's going to be hard. You're going to look dumb. You're not going to know the answers. You've always been that go-to guy. Not anymore. So you've got to be willing to put your ego aside and not be that I know it all and say, I don't know it all. I don't know. Teach me. Be willing to learn. I'm willing to learn from a guy who's been selling for six months. 
for six weeks, for six hours. If I can learn something from that person or someone who's not even in my field, if I can apply it to gain new skills, dude, I'm all about that. Let go of everything that has gotten you here. If you're trying to get somewhere else, then you're going to have to release what you've been holding on to. And it's temporary. Just tell yourself that. This is just temporary. And you'll find you'll be at a tremendous advantage over veterans that you work with because most veterans are trying to maintain a presence. They're trying to maintain this air of professionalism. They're trying to maintain the title on the business card. Don't be the noun. Be the verb where you're constantly, hey, let's go. Let's try it. No, don't know anything about that. Don't pawn it off on somebody else. If I can use it, damn it, bring it on. Teach me. Let's go. The second thing you're going to need in skill acquisition, dude, you got to be willing to sit in the tension. Yeah. You have to be able to put yourself in these pressure situations where you're in these mayday moments because you hadn't had them in a long time. Remember, you've gotten here with this talent, but you could do it without thinking. Now you have to think. Now you got to sit in the tension and try to figure it out. Where your mind is telling you to revert back to your old ways, don't. I've been presenting a certain way all the time for decades. And I had a coach come in and teach me a new way of making offers to customers. I had to unlearn everything that I'd been learning for 24 years. I had to suspend all of that. And when I was presenting, I was having to think. I was fumbling through the words. It wasn't coming out smooth like I'm used to. My mind was telling me to revert back, mayday out. Oh, catch it on the next one. No. I sat in the tension and I said, fuck it, man. I'm going to wrestle with this thing. And that's the image that I have, wrestling with an alligator. And I wrestle with that thing. And I know if I just keep applying the pressure to it and I don't revert back, all of the voices, see, I mean, told you it wasn't going to work. Look at your numbers. It's temporary. You got to be willing to fall in order to rise, okay? And so you're going to have these peaks and valleys. If you think about other professions, the Navy SEALs, it's a lot of pressure. And they train in the pressure. Fighter pilots train in the pressure. They have simulations. Then they have real situations. And so you need to take some of the simulation and apply it into situations and be able to work through those things and don't bail out or beat yourself up because it didn't work. It's not going to work, man. It's, it's repetitions. I got to put this thing in and you grab any and all, all kinds of situations. So that way you can start getting this cadence, this rhythm. And then once you start doing that, it gets smoother and smoother and you don't have to think as much. Your experience catches up, and now you're gliding through different scenarios, different offers, different objections. It's like you're taking one thing after another. But initially, you're trying to catch that one thing. Uh, it's all right. Work through it. The third thing it's going to take is short-term memory. You have to have short-term memory. Athletes know this. They take the shot. Doesn't work. Blow the play. Lose the game. Next. They have to. Otherwise, it'll just consume you. So you have to be willing to have short-term memory loss. And it's not like you just chalk it up and like, oh, I'm not going to give this any consideration. No. If it's good or bad, you got to be dyslexic. New skills that you're acquiring and using, when it's good, look for the losses. Be dyslexic. Look for the losses. What are the leaks? What are the things that it worked, but it didn't quite come out right? Customer hit me with this, but I wasn't really smooth about that. Customer hit me with a question I really didn't know the answer for. So I just kind of bumbled through it, got away with it, worked through it. And then if it's bad, look for the good. What are some things that you did well in? And then go on to the next thing. Don't have a parade for too long. And don't kick the can down the road for that long either. Having this emotional and mental flexibility is its a superpower, man. But the only way that you're going to be more mentally and emotionally agile, you got to be willing to sit in the tension. You got to unlearn, sit in the tension, and then you got to increase those capacities. You got to feel it. And you got to remind yourself, 
Failing is part of the process. I'm not a failure. Failure is an identity. Failing, that's just part of the process. Skill acquisition, baby. That's what I'm doing. Think about these VC firms. They have what's called deal flow. So deal flow means they have all these ideas and business propositions. They don't just pick one. They pick many. Most of those, 80, 90% of them fail. But the few that win more than compensate for the losses. Sounds a lot like the sales profession, doesn't it? <laughs> you go to work to purposely fail, but that is the only way that you succeed. I fail, 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 fail. Boom. Success compensates for that. This is why people can't make it in sales is because they can't handle the rejection. They can't handle the failure rate. It's just deal flow. So that's the same way, man. When you're acquiring new skills, it's just deal flow, man. I'm just bringing these things in. I'm acquiring new skills. I don't celebrate too long and I don't stay too low. Stay even killed. Next. <laughs> Remember, risk is safe. Safe is risk. The more risks you take, then that creates more options. But when you play it safe, you're exposing yourself to more risk because it's like a five question test versus a hundred question test. A five question test, when I'm playing it safe and I take five questions, I work with five customers, hell, three of them back out, fucking failure. But if I have a hundred in my sample size, then I can lose 30% of those. Still got 70 in the pipeline. I'm good. Let's roll. Keep it agile. Keep it spicy. Keep it moving. Keep it simple. Cut out the chatter. Last thing you're going to need in skill acquisition, you're going to need some luck. And there's a formula for luck. It's diversification plus persistence. Yes, there's a formula for luck. Diversity, many options, many things to choose from, plus persistence. I'm trying all these kind of different things. I'm working all kinds of different areas. And because now I'm learning how to be emotionally agile and I'm willing to purposefully sit in the tension and I'm willing to unlearn everything that I've learned before, I'll leverage my experience, but I won't be judgmental of it. I'm willing to be taught by anyone, by anything. So that way I can apply it and develop new skills. What's important to notate with skill acquisition is you got to make sure that your thinking is tight and your speech is right. Don't talk about what you don't want to have happen. Stop saying stupid shit. You can think it all day long. Just don't speak it. You're going to have those thoughts. You're going to have those woe is me's. You're going to have those times where you call yourself a piece of shit. Okay. You're going to have those. Cool. Just don't say it. Think it next. That's what you always got to look at, man. You always got to look at next. This is what's going to keep you growing and evolving in an ever changing industry. The sales industry I'm in is changing rapidly, but the life I'm living in now, that's changing rapidly too. And I can apply these to my life. This is why I call it the sales life is because I can take a lot of the things that apply to my sales career and I can apply these to life. Am I willing to walk out the door and unlearn? Am I willing to confront and sit in the tension purposefully and not let it come to me? I actually go to it. Let's go. Am I willing to have short-term memory? Be, be mentally and emotionally agile. I'm just flowing, man. Just flowing. Deal flow. And then last, will I create my own luck? Luck doesn't find me. I create it. Diversity. Persistence. Boom. I don't want to be just the most talented. I want to be skillfully talented. Remember the greatest sale that you will ever make is to sell you on you because you're more than enough. Stay amazing. Stay in the sales life.